Income tax 2023-2024, educator expenses tax software example. Get ready and some coffee because we're setting our refund to the max with income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But... But that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our form 1040 example problem using LACERT tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, and instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at our taxpayer, Adam Taxman, just trying to avoid a dang taxman, living in 90210 Beverly Hills, single filer to start off with, no dependents. We're going to start off with an even 100,000 W-2 income. The standard deduction at the 13,850, resulting in taxable income 86,150, which we can mirror and see in Excel formula-wise. We've got the 100,000 standard deduction 13,850, getting us to the taxable income 86,150. The tax calculated by the software 14,266, which we can see on page two, and X. Let's go back to page one, our major point of focus, this time being on line number 10, adjustments to income from schedule one. You might call these like above the line deductions. They're basically deductions, although they're called adjustments to income because they're reducing our income up top. So this would be like our gross income. And then we have a type of deduction, or you can think of it as a reduction of income if you so choose. And that's going to give us another subtotal and important subtotal adjusted gross income. And then we have more deductions being the greater of the standard deduction or itemized deductions. These above the line deductions or uh, adjustments to income, which you could also call like schedule one deductions. Now that we have this relatively new item of a new schedule, schedule number one are important to note, even for taxpayers that are below the threshold of being able to itemize because you could still get a tax benefit from them even if you don't have enough deductions to clear the standard deduction threshold all right so let's go over here and say all right let's go into that schedule number one which is the additional income and adjustments to income additional income part number one and we want then the deductions so we're going to go to page number two which is going to be part two adjustments to income. The first one being these educator expenses. Now, the educator expenses, as we talked about in a prior presentation, were basically kind of put in place by the power of the teachers unions, right? Because normally we don't have a deduction just for a particular industry. Usually the tax code is kind of more broad where we're going to say, well, if you qualify for this deduction in general, then it would apply to you. But in this case, we have a deduction specifically aimed at educators. So when we have the, so basically the, the question that would come up if you're a tax preparer would be, is someone a teacher? If they are a teacher, then the question, are they a qualified teacher? And if so, they probably have the deductions necessary to take this deduction, but you want to make sure that they have qualified expenses. So then we know that an eligible educator is a kindergarten through grade 12 teacher, instructor, counselor, principal, or aide who worked in a school for at least 900 hours during a school year. So they're all the people that pay the money to the teacher's union, right? And that's, that's, that's who's going to qualify. They keep it. Okay. So in any case, so that means that uh, so if they qualify, then we might. So if we hear that they're an educator, then do they qualify? We're going to say, OK, well, then you probably have the ability to take this deduction because it's capped at three hundred dollars. 
However, note the idea here is that you can only take expenses necessary to help you to generate the revenue. Just want to recap this concept because it's important from a tax perspective, and you can see it most clearly on business income reported on the Schedule C, meaning if you had a Schedule C business, then you would have income and then deductions, which are expenses. This is basically an income statement. It would not make sense to tax someone on $100,000 of income if they needed to expend like $80,000 to generate the 100000 That wouldn't make sense because they might not even have the money to pay the tax because really they had to expend those expenses to generate the income. So an income tax only makes sense if you tax people on the net income after the necessary expenses in order to get the top line income. And we call those, we could call those ordinary and necessary expenses. Now those expenses doesn't mean that you, that you had to expend them. In other words, if I didn't have advertising, would that mean I would go out of business? Most of the time, no, it's not like mandatory or I die kind of expense, but those are the ordinary and necessary expenses typical for me to try to attempt to generate more revenue. That's gonna be the general idea. If someone is a W-2 employee, going back to the 1040, such as we have here for Adam, we're gonna imagine they're a, a teacher now, although it's a fairly high salary for, uh, for the teachers you would think, but let's say that, that they're a teacher and they've got the W-2 income. As with any other W-2 job, the assumption is that you're not buying the things necessary to generate the revenue because your employer is providing that. Now note that most people, not just teachers, are probably spending a significant amount of their own money, $300 being fairly low actually, in order to do their job well, especially if you're in a job like teaching or nursing where you're caring for people and you get attached to the people and you're trying to help them out, then you're probably spending money on it, right? So 300 is a fairly low threshold, but it's usually not deductible because you're an employee but now they're gonna allow you to deduct, deduct the, the 300 for this particular industry, for, mainly for political reasons, but it's been, it was in place a long time ago in any case. So most people will qualify for that, you would think if they're a teacher, but you wanna make sure that they have the documentation in the event of an audit related to this. Now, it's not likely you're gonna get audited with, will the IRS target teachers <laughs> for, for the $300 to make sure that they spent those is, is probably not going to be the thing that triggers an audit unless, again, the IRS is coming after you for political reasons or something. Maybe, they, <laughs> maybe that's what they'll, they'll get you on. But uh, usually you would think that wouldn't be the, any case. So let's go and jump to that one. Go to page number two, and then we'll right click and jump to that area. So, so we're going to say if it was 10,000, let's say we, we spent 10,000 or $1,000 I put here, it's still gonna cap it at 300. So if I go back on over, it's gonna cap at 300. That's why the software is fairly useful because you wanna know that cap of 300 to be able to communicate that to other people. But it's also useful that you can kind of test it in the software by saying, well, what if I put like $600? Well, it's gonna cap it at $300, that's the cap. That's gonna sum up down at the bottom of the schedule which is gonna then pull into the form 1040. So we've got the 100,000 uh, now from W-2 income, we're assuming from a teacher, <laughs> and the $300 above the line deduction to bring us down to 99,700. So now the standard deduction is still the same. We didn't have to take itemized deductions greater than the standard deduction to get that $300 because it's an above the line or schedule one deduction. And that's gonna get us to the 85,850. Let's put that over here in our Excel worksheet. So now we're gonna have uh, adjustments to income. So we're looking at this line item in our, and that's in another worksheet that I put over here, adjustment to income. The only thing we have in there thus far is uh, self-employment taxes. Let's make this black and white. So I'm gonna pull this down and let's add another category, which I'm just gonna say is educator expenses, educ educator expen expenses we will make them black and white da, 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 da. and then i'll put two two columns for it because you could have a married couple which then means that you have uh 600 of of expenses because they both have 300 and oftentimes teachers like other industries tend to 
uh, marry each other, right? So you could have two, could easily have two teachers or people that work in the uh, school area. So this is going to be uh, to to a so edu so let's just say tax payer, and it's going to be three hundred dollars, and this will be total educator tour expenses. I'll put this in the outer column, summing that two columns up. I'm going to pull this to the outer column as well. I'll pull this out there and then I'll s fix my sum of the total of these two. Summing up these two categories that we have thus far. Let's make this black and white as well because that'll be so I could see it connected. Okay, so then, so then that's going to pull over. Did I spell it right? Let's check the spelling. Uh, expenses. Okay, so then that's going to pull into page one. So it's an above the line. So 100,000 minus the 300 gets me to the 99,700. This adjusted gross income is quite important because many times when we look at phase outs, as we'll see later in more deductions and credits, it's not based on this 300,000, but based on the AGI as its fundamental, at least starting point for things that might phase out as income goes up. And then we've got the, the standard deduction hasn't changed, 13,850, gets us to the taxable income, 85,850, which is the same over here. That looks MUI BN, B to the N, BN. Tax is now at the 14,200. So I'll say, okay, tax 142, oh, that's not right. That's not right, 14,200. Okay, so that's what we have there. Let's go back on over. Now, remember that this is an area you're not going to have necessarily documentation for. So you're not going to get typically like the equivalent of a 1099 for income or anything like that for it. You're going to be basically getting this information by observing on their W-2. And when you interview, if you have a client as to what they do for a living, and if they're an uh, instructor, then that's when you're going to, it's going to give you the question. And then, of course, your assumption will probably be that they have over $300 of legitimate expenses and make sure that you then communicate with them to make sure that they, they have the supporting documentation for that so that in the event of an audit, uh, they, could, they could produce that documentation. But you're not usually providing that documentation to the IRS in any kind of attachment or anything uh, like that. That's the general concept of it. Now, of course, if they were married, then you could have two teachers. So we're going to go back on over and say, okay, what if they were uh, married? And so then I'm going to go to the income and say they both work at the same place. But now let's break out the income to 50,000 and not 500,000. That's unlikely for a teacher. You'd have to be, you'd have to be like, a, anyway, we'll say W2, let's say this one is going to be another 50,000. I'm going to indicate that this is the spouse so that it knows that these are two indivi two different individuals and then when I go back on over I'm going to say that we have schedule number 1, page number 2, part number 2, right click and jump into that area and I'm going to say it was 1,000 taxpayer and spouse, right? So if I'll put a thousand for the spouse. It'll cap it at 300s for 300 and 300 or 600 total, which is gonna sum up down below, pull into the form 1040. And so now we have the 600 here in the form 1040. I can mirror that on my worksheet by saying, okay, here's this adjustment. Now we have spouse, I don't know how to spell spouse. And 600, we'll put that, that pulls over to 600. Now they're married, so my standard deduction is going to change. So I'm going to say this not, it's doubled now to 27,000. And so that gives me a taxable income 71,700. So if I go back on over, 71,700, page number two, calculating the tax now at the 8,167, 8,000. Uh, 8167, 8167, 8167. So that's the, that's the general idea with uh, the educator expenses. Bottom line, you don't get any documentation for it. You need to know what industry they're in. 
are they a teacher? If they're a teacher, then you're like, oh, you've got those teachers unions. They, and they're, they're and so we're so you have a you have a deduction that no one else gets the nurses don't even get it or whatever but that's cool it's not that much i'm just saying i'm not complaining or anything i'm just saying it's, it's like a special deduction so then we so then and then and then uh that's when you're going to basically say well i'm going to assume most likely that they might have those expenses but i want to make sure that they have the documentation and whatnot uh, with regards to the expenses so that you can take that basically above the line deduction.